Hi guys, so this is kind of an unplanned video because I kind of made an unplanned purchase. <laughs> I just got for a really really good price a Winsor & Newton's 24 set and I am very happy about it and I wanted to unbox it with you, hence the unscheduled video. Because you know, the idea of just, you know, taking this out of the box and taking the little wrappers out of the pans and just starting swatching or experimenting with them without showing you the process kind of bums me out. I think it's much, much better if we do it together. Don't you agree? <laughs> now, here's the thing. Winsor & Newton is arguably one of the best watercolor brands out there. There are a lot of videos that will tell you that. It's usually between Winsor & Newton and Daniel Smith, but you know, I think most people, most uh, professional artists that you see on YouTube and such use Winsor & Newton. For me personally, I don't know why, <laughs> maybe it's just a pet peeve, I've never really considered getting one. That's the honest truth. I never considered, I am a Schminke girl. I love Schminke. I've tried Academy. I plan on trying Horridum real soon. And I just love the free spirit of it, you know? I know these are very nice. These are high quality. I know these paint like a dream. Uh, but you know, when people say in reviews, oh no, the Schminke is a little bit too unpredictable. That for me is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe because that way I'll just have an excuse to say, oh no, it's not something I did, it's just a paint that's unpredictable. <laughs> I find Schmincke colors very vibrant. These, I don't know, I've never tried them in person, but when I see the videos, they just don't appeal to me as much. Daniel, Daniel Smith too, I don't know what it is. Uh, just call it a pet peeve, okay? I've never tried either of them, so I really have no actual reasons, you know, not to like them. You know, for me, it doesn't make sense to own them all. I was never that, I don't want to be the kind of person who has, you know, boxes full of sets or, you know, shelves full of sets. I like the ones I like. I intend to have those, use those, and that's it. I don't plan on having loads of them just, you know, for the sake of having them, particularly since I am buying these. These aren't getting, you know, these aren't being offered to me. So, yeah, but uh, everything changed when there was this big promotion and I got these for less than 90 euros, which for where I am is kind of a bargain. And, um, you know, I've just decided to try them out. So that's exactly what we'll do. <laughs> so here's our 24 box. You know, this box looks like it has been opened many, many times, hopefully for quality control. Uh, the box is a little scraped. I must confess I expected it to be a little bit more protected considering this these are really expensive paints. Uh, it comes with a little brochure with I guess all the colors they have available. I would have to read this a bit more carefully. Well, it's the story of the paint. Um, you know, finest watercolor range, carefully curated sets, complementing watercolor practice, yada yada yada. Here you have a lot of information on their colors, about the light, light fastness of it all, um, the pigments they use, you know, a lot of information that I think is actually kind of useful, you know, when you're think if you're thinking about buying more pans, to know which colors are available. I can see right now a couple I would like to own. Oh, indigo. I love indigo. I don't think this one has indigo, actually. Uh, so I'll just have to look into this a bit more carefully. Now, these are pants, not tubes. Um, scrape box. Other than that, seems pretty great. I love the small pants. I don't like it when they come with big pants, because if I want a lot of colors, I don't want them to get mixed. And here we go. Okay, a big pro for me is there is no white. <laughs> I really, really don't get why, you know, brands add white to their watercolors. Maybe it's for pastels, but I don't do pastels. Um, it just doesn't make sense for me personally. If I want a lighter color, I just add more water because it's watercolors, right? So for me, big plus, no white. I love that. Big con, aside from the fact that the box wasn't very well protected, is that there is no swatch card. Um, a swatch card is really handy, particularly for these, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just going to start unboxing them while we speak. Um, you know, swatch cards are really handy because, you know, most watercolor paints, particularly good quality watercolor paints, the color you have on the pans as they are dry are not anywhere near what you will have once you activate them. So a swatch card is a must-have when you want to see how each color performs. Ooh, a lot of plastic here. Look at that. 
a lot, a lot of plastic for sure. So yeah, for me, a watch card is a must and they do make watercolor paper, so they could very easily create a swatch card in their watercolor paper. And who knows, you know, for people who've never tried the paper, as they're swatching, they just might like the paper and want to try it out. So win-win, right? Or I don't know, maybe it's just the marketing <laughs> professional in me. I used to do marketing. That's what I studied for in college. I don't do it anymore. Well, you know, you kind of do it. It's kind of a... Um, it's kind of a knowledge that goes with you, right? For life. Because you know, watercolor painters usually don't like the swatch card that comes with the, the set. They end up swatching on their own paper, which makes sense because that's the paper you're going to use. And usually swatch paper isn't very good, but you know, they make good quality watercolor paper. So you know, if they use those for swatches, then people would get to try the paper out, fall in love with it, go and buy the paper. Makes perfect sense to me. But you know, maybe that's the marketing in me talking. <laughs> okay, so we've got lemon yellow, Windsor yellow. Here's another thing that actually got me excited about trying these paints, which is they have a lot of Windsor colors. So I'm expecting them to be completely different from all the other colors I have because, you know, they're Windsor colors. So they're supposed to be specific to the brand. And that's exciting, right? That's always exciting, I think. So cadmium free yellow, another big change. There are no cadmium colors in this set. They're all cadmium free, which I think is a very good thing. Cause you know, we keep hearing, oh, this one's, yeah. <laughs> Cause we, we just keep hearing how cadmium is bad for you. And of course it is. And I think that's actually a plus, you know, to get really good paints without the cadmium is kind of a good thing, right? So cadmium free red. This is bright red and we still haven't activated them. Whoops! Oh god, this one just jumped right off. Alizarin Crimson. I just wish they'd done this without all this plastic. So anyway, I have created my own swatch card, with which we will be filling in just a while. Permanent Rose, this one. Okay, so um, I forgot about this. So Windsor Yellow, Windsor Lemon, Windsor Yellow, Cadmium Free Yellow, Windsor Orange, Cadmium Free Red, Alizarin Crimson. Permanent Rose, don't mind that, that's my dog coming to see what we're doing. Permanent Magenta, Windsor Violet. Okay, I have caught us up to speed. And now come the blues. No indigo, maybe, but this paint gray is looking a lot of blue, so maybe. Oh god, how do I read this? Indenthrine Blue? Indenthrine? Oh. Indenthrin? I don't know. Guys, you tell me, how do you read this word? Because I have no idea and we do not have anything similar to this in Portuguese. So, I'm gonna need your help. Yeah, my dog's a little bit restless. I apologize. Okay, French Ultramarine. I cannot wait try these guys these look really really good and can you see how they just pop off some of them just pop off the pans you know I have this one that's pretty much you know shallow to the pan this one too but most of them they're they're like you know domed over the pan so that is a lot of paint here Windsor blue Actually, I'm not sure, you know, for some brands like Schminke, for example, uh, the quality of the paints doesn't really change whether it's a pan or a tube. I know Windsor and Newton don't really like that you fill pans with the tube, so they must be different in a way. Cerulean Blue, this is one of my favorite colors, and this looks really, really nice. Um, so do you know by any chance if the pans and the tubes make a difference? I haven't tried two watercolors, I just love the pans, they're just so much fun to play with actually. <laughs> I have no other, no other reason other than that, these are just more fun. Windsor Green, you know there are quite a few of them loose from the pans, which is a shame because the minute I turned this box over they will all fall down. Um, okay, Hooker's Green, I have so many Hooker's Green already. <laughs> From Kuretaki Gansaitambi to Meliankri Excellent to Schminka Academy, I think. 
no, that one's called different. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the same thing. Permanent sap green. Lovely too. Olive green, another color I have on all my sets. All the sets of watercolors I own have olive green. And it is one of my favorite colors. Maybe because my last name is Olive Tree. <laughs> Whoa, there you go. Yeah, maybe I'm dropping these and releasing them. I don't know what's going on here. That's not helping, that's for sure. So yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is such an understated color. It really is. Um, I used it so much more than I ever expected I would. It goes very well with the blues, with the greens. It's just, just such a... Oh, here we go again. No wonder they're falling off. It's just such a great color to have. I also have it in all my sets, I think. Raw Sienna. Burned Sienna. Almost there, guys. Keep with me. Raw Amber. These are a lot of bronze. Burnt Umber. So much plastic. Ugh. They really could find a more, you know, ecological way to keep these pens, I think. Paint Gray. And last but not least, Ivory Black. This is a swatch card I have made. I have drawn, you know, the black line. I'm going to paint all of this. Okay, let us activate these paints. They're meant to go like this on my box, so that's why I picked this order. Let us activate them for the very first time. Love the feeling, gotta say. Okay, guys, let's just go ahead and get started. So, Windsor Lemon. That's a lot of paint. Not enough water. Next, Windsor Yellow. Activated much better. Let's see if we can make it go lower. Now, cadmium free yellow. This is a darker one. Yeah, for sure. Let me just try. Yeah, that's how I like my swatches. Okay, now we move to the orange. Windsor orange. Nice bright little orange. Very nice. These colors really went really nicely. They're creamy, nothing to print out so far. Cadmium free red. don't have a lot of wiggle room. I think it's enough. Alizarin Crimson. I have no idea. This color is so dark on the pan, but look at that. It's like lipstick. We go down here. Oh, that's my favorite part. And it just goes. Permanent Rose. Let's see how this one does. Here and it just goes very nice. So now we have permanent magenta. Ooh. 
This is the most violet magenta I have ever seen. Magenta is usually more on a pink. This one's quite unique. I like it. Okay, Windsor Violet. Ooh, look at that. That's some dark purple right there. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, I know I am using a lot of water, okay guys? That is totally on purpose. I want to see how they dry. I want to see, you know, the markings they leave when they dry. I want all of that. Okay. gonna try and say it. Indian Threen Blue? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Indian Threen? Indian Threen? I don't know. Please help me. Please let me know how this is said so I can say it properly the next time. Okay, French Ultra Green. I kind of wish I made a bigger swatch card, but you know, you wanted to fit the box, but I could have made it like threefold and have a lot more room, but then it wouldn't be, you know, in this order. Not a lot of wiggle room here. Windsor blue. That's a perky little blue, isn't it? It does look kind of similar to other blues I own, but Probably not, because it's Windsor Blue, so it must be specific. First line is done. Cerulean Blue is next. I have really big expectations for this color, by the way. Ooh, look at that. That is so gorgeous. So, so gorgeous. Now on to the greens. I gotta say, these Windsor colors, I was expecting something truly different, but I have to say, these are kind of similar to other colors I own. They're not called Windsor colors, obviously, so, you know, but they changed the names, but that's all pretty much the same. I was expecting something unique to this brand. Kind of disappointed. I figured the Windsor colors would be truly unique, and they're not. They're just pretty much same colors, different name kind of situation, you know. I have definitely seen these colors before. Yellow ochre. Do have to be a little bit careful because I don't want any contamination. Next. really kind of similar to yellow ochre, isn't it? They're even similar in the pants. Burn sienna. Raw umber. They're all really similar, but hopefully when they dry they get a little bit different. I'm not really impressed so far with these paints. Burnt Umber. Haynes Grey. Another color I have big expectations for because this is the closest this has to indigo. Ooh, yeah! 
it's very close to indigo lovely this is what I love about indigo the grayish quality of it and yeah paints gray does not disappoint our ivory black Let's see if we can turn this into mild gray Our swatch card is nice and dry, thanks to my heat gun. <laughs> you can already see some um, things here. Uh, yeah, this blue is definitely gorgeous. The paint gray dries out much grayer than I would have hoped. Um, it pulled a little bit, but this isn't really good paper. This is Canson XL, I think, so you know it would pull. That's what it does. For these three colors, they are way too similar, way too similar. I would much rather they would choose one of these, maybe yellow ochre, or maybe two, you know, yellow ochre and raw sienna, for example, and take this one off and, you know, do an indigo or another green or another pink or something like that. Um, so yeah, next step is to actually paint something with these lovelies. I am loving the vibrancy. I am loving the transparency. You can definitely see that black line in all the colors. I love it, again, love it, love it, love it, that there isn't a white inside. <laughs> so our next step is to paint. I am done and as it turns out, you know, buying a set of watercolors you don't want can be a very good idea. <laughs> this is the final result. I am loving it. I love the way the paint behaved. I love the way it bloomed. I love all the little tiny shading. Um, there is nothing at fault with this paint whatsoever. It is my first professional paint. I'll give you that. I have never compared it with other professional paints. I guess I'll just have to do it <laughs> sometime soon. But for now, I am very, very happy with it. And I am very glad that I got to make this purchase for a really, really low price. And I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And I will see you really, really soon. Bye-bye.